What's good? It's Fever. You know what tips are. Here are 10 coming at you for Black Desert Online aimed at the newbie and trying hard not to overlap too hard with other tips videos or frankly with common sense. Arguably the most important thing is looking good and the game looking good. So slow walk is on caps lock, hide your UI is control U, and here you can mess around with camera positioning and some depth of field effects. And if you happen to be on a ledge, hitting Q will allow you to sit, which is the optimal position for a selfie. But the most important and almost impressive feature is in the graphic settings where the game offers contrast and photo filter options. For most of the non-power users of SweetFX or Reshade, this will almost completely replace those. And for people who hate how vibrant or how much bloom is in the game, you can remove that. I should also mention that you can remove depth of field entirely. You can get rid of camera shake and jitters and a lot of the over the topness of the game is able to be toned down or turned off completely through these graphic settings. Potions are the devil. So you'll come to see that the game has both weight and inventory limits. You can hold fewer very heavy items and you can't hold onto a bajillion smaller ones. And even currency has weight. But the devil in bottle form are fucking potions. The game gives you like three quadrillion of these and the weight on the tooltip is per item and it can get carried away real quick. So if you start finding yourself bogged down, visit a warehouse, sure, drop off some currency or store some items. But when you're looking at that bar and the red part of that bar is showing you the weight in your inventory, I promise you at some point in your Black Desert career, a huge chunk of that is going to be from potions. So store them or use basic alchemy and upgrade them or throw them away. Just fucking potions, man. While we're talking items, there are several types, okay? There's vendor trash, there's market trash, there's special use, there's trade items, but what we're looking at here are turn-in items. When you hover over these, at the bottom of the tooltip, it will tell you how many you need and what you'll get if you turn them in, and these rewards are usually very good, but because there's no quest attached to it, sometimes it's hard to know where to go turn them in. Well, if you right-click, choose Find NPC, you will get an auto path set for you directly to where you turn them in. Talk about convenient. In addition, the secondary option, if you right click, will put a running tally on your screen to keep track of it. It is just so goddamn convenient because farming these is something that'll keep you sane while grinding. Quests are plentiful and categorized. Combat, life skill, fishing, and trade. Not only does this reflect what you'll be doing in the quests, but the game allows you to filter what quests are visible to you. So if you don't particularly like life skills, toggle it off and you won't see them and the NPCs that have them won't have icon indicators. In the beginning, you can turn them all on so you can see everything the game has to offer, but you will be thankful you know how to turn quests off later because there are so many quests, many of which are repeatable, and sometimes it's hard to get anything done when you're being pulled in 30 different directions, which happens to be the quest log cap. Energy is the resource required to do most non-combat things. It is increased with knowledge, and you gain knowledge by connecting in some way with a piece of the world for the first time. So catching a fish type you haven't caught before, you get some knowledge. Cutting down a type of tree, you get some knowledge. Exploring and finding a zone, knowledge. Talking to an NPC with an exclamation point over their head, which basically means they are in a hollow shell, knowledge. So it is in your best interest to at least dip your toe in aspects of the game you might not enjoy for the perks because increased energy is awesome. Monster kills are similar but different. Killing them can lead to knowledge gain. Sometimes it happens on the first kill and sometimes on the 50th. And there's a grade system that is in here. But if you've watched tip videos at all or checked out any what I wish I knew about the game, this is talked to to death. And it's not that important for a newbie. The act of giving yourself a family name when you start isn't just a token gesture. This game is incredibly alt-friendly. Your storage, your mount, your wagons, your boats, your pets, your knowledge, your title, even your guild is shared between your alts or your family. You even share the max energy cap, but energy refreshes independently of each other. What this means is that by having more brothers and sisters, uh, that means alts if you didn't catch that, it allows you to spend more energy in total. You can have alts parked in specific areas or at vendors for quick access. For example, say your pets are getting hungry but you have no food, well you can log over to an alt parked in town, buy some food from the stable, eat it, and your pets are refreshed for that original character. Basically everything outside of the stuff that are carried personally on those characters, their karma, and their available energy is shared. Meaning you really want to manage and utilize your alts, they're very important to overall progression. This leads to the incredibly important tip of managing your energy. 
you don't want this to cap. This is a limited resource that powers all that non-combat stuff, which usually ends up in currency or upgrades or influence. And even if you don't have a lot of time, there are really fast and dirty energy dumps, like fishing or investing in a node, and then there is slow and more financially beneficial and sound ways like farming or hiring workers. But the takeaway is try not to let this cap out, and if you are running with a family, managing their energy should be dealt with as well. Luckily, it regenerates at a much slower rate if they aren't the ones you're playing, so it's a little bit easier there, but energy is important. Energy is value. Moving into a way to burn that energy is relationships with NPCs. So you can select conversation if you meet some relevant knowledge thresholds with NPCs, and then you can play a really shitty minigame that can result in you raising amity with that NPC. And depending on the NPC, this can lead to unlocked shop items, hidden quests, buffs, new knowledge types, and this is all shown by icons around the Amity circle underneath all their like information and bio. And because of the amount of NPCs and the amount of bonuses, this is a long-term type grind. And it can have really positive outcomes as you try to get everyone to like you. And if you want to spoil it a bit for yourself, there are guides that show you which NPCs to cherry pick based on what your playstyle or focus is, but this is a perfect way to just dump excess energy. There is so much in the game that you can can do, that trying to do it all will get you nowhere fast. And that isn't bad per se, I mean being absorbed in stuff to do is rad, it's a really large appeal to the game, but if you want to be a proficient anything, a proficient fisher, you have to almost force yourself to spend time fishing because frankly there is always a friend asking you if you want a scroll boss, or energy to be managed, or unrelated quests that need to be done, or trade packs peaking in profit, there is always something vying for your time. You need to kind of bunker down and focus. And what I find awesome is that there are in-client rankings. So if you are a fisher and you bunker down and you become that fisherman, you can be on the rankings for fishing. You can be on the rankings for gathering and leveling and trading. There are rankings for everything. And it's a really nice feather in the cap when you actually put the work in and see yourself climbing up the leaderboard. The last tip, and this really couldn't be any more important in a game like this, is to find a guild. Not only do you stand to personally benefit with in-game systems that reward guild participation, but people have been playing this game for a long time already and are incredible sources of information. Having people to go on dumb adventures is awesome, but really, you're just going to learn so much more being around people who know what they're doing and what they're talking about than you're ever going to learn piecing together random bits of information from YouTube videos and online guides. So. I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought tip videos were supposed to be short. Fuck me. Until next time, this is Fever. Purse.